because of the level. This is at a real deep, high level. We respect the word of God. It's like a, a woman and a man in marriage. The man says, I love and respect you. To his wife. If he said, I love and respect you, honey, but I have equal love and reverence for my secretary. <laughs> what would you think of him? <laughs> Adulterer. You don't have equal love and reverence for any other woman. <laughs> and if a church, or so-called church, says I have equal love and reverence for tradition as I do sacred scripture, say, that's adulterous. You, you can't. You can't. You can't. And call yourself Christian. You just cannot. So you see how horrendous this is. Well, how does the Catholic Church hold together since they don't have any absolutes? Ah, they do have an absolute. They have a man who's, who's infallible. And so they go on to say in their catechism, paragraph 891, the Supreme Pontiff, in virtue of his office, possesses infallible teaching authority. When as Supreme Pastor and Teacher of all the faithful, he proclaims with a definitive act that the doctrine of faith and morals is to be held as such. So you have an infallible man with a big hat on his head and mitre on his head and, you know, and all the robes he sits in on. And he... Um, he, he says it's true and he's infallible. So <laughs> you do what he says and that's how, that's your standard. That is man's standard. That's listening to man as if he were God, giving you an attribute of God which is blasphemous. There's nobody infallible. <laughs> Let God be true and every man a liar, as scripture says. <laughs> You don't base everything on a man. It's on the written word of God. And so even on this very first topic alone, you see that we're not dealing with a Christian church. We're dealing with a church that believes equally in tradition, which is her tradition, and she doesn't spell it out. And then she has a man controlling it. Break your heart think of at least what they claim over a, a billion people in this organization. I call it an organization or a system because not only not, but there's not a church, it's not a gathering of believers. A gathering of people who believe in a system. Break your heart. The most important topic after this is grace, because it's dealing with who our God is. Our God is gracious, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And so it follows on that, what we have here in the first verse, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ. He's, it's the graciousness, by his grace, he is utterly gracious to reach out to those dead and trespass and sins, as each one of us know that are saved. We were saved out of our sins. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works. The gracious God, not of anything that we deserve. We deserve only condemnation and death and damnation. It's by grace we are saved, through faith. And even the faith itself is a gift of God. This is so wonderful. Let us look at the official teaching of the Catholic Church. Grace is the help God gives us to respond to our vocation of becoming his adopted sons. It introduces us into the intimacy of the Trinitarian life. Paragraph 2021. 20, grace is the help. Man, how, how could you debase grace at that level? Grace is who God is. It's not simply a help. A help is something somebody uses. A man takes his black and decker power drill and he drills a hole in the wall and puts in the gadget he wants to whatever. A woman is cooking breakfast for her husband and she takes a frying pan. You know, it's a help. 
and she puts two or three eggs on it and cooks breakfast. God's grace is not something we use. It's, it's, it's something God does. It's who God is. It's his power in action. God so loved the world. It's not a help. So the man, man responds to this. Man is in the driving seat. Man is not in the driving seat. It's God. God saves. I mean, talk about debasing in your official definition of grace what the graciousness of our God is. And then they go on in paragraph 11, 29, the church affirms for believers the sacraments of the new covenant are necessary for salvation. What? Sacraments, rituals are necessary? What did, when, what, when the jail keeper asked Paul and Silas, what do I do to be saved? <laughs> Paul and Silas didn't say, well, the sacraments are necessary. <laughs> <laughs> to believe in the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. You know, it says, sacraments are necessary for salvation. Rituals are necessary for salvation. Oh man, it goes on. Sacramental grace is the grace of the Holy Spirit given by Christ and proper to each sacrament. They say that the power that comes from these signs that you do called sacrament rituals is God the Holy Spirit power. That is an official blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So a priest in a little box, somebody comes and whispers or sins into his ears, you know, and then he says, I absolve you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I hate even to say those words. As I said them for 21 years as a priest, oh man, you know. I have, and that people are forgiven their sins, you know because that's Holy Spirit power. I baptize about 30 babies uh, every month as a priest, and I said there were new creatures that been, they're now are Christians and baptized because I had put water on the baby's head. It's blasphemous to say that, and it doesn't work. <laughs> Just look. I used to look at the babies I baptized and saw when they grew up, and said, man, it's like one of those microwaves that make noise and nothing happens. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was, uh, it was, you know, and those people I heard confessions of, you know, people who were in adultery and fornication and drugs and everything. Then I saw they were, they were still continuing afterwards. It doesn't work. But then they say that's necessary for salvation. It's really horrendous, but that's the t official teaching of this system that calls itself church. Most important probably from our side is the faith that God gives us is faith. And this is so clear in scripture. We just praise God how clear he is and what faith is. If you like our YouTube channel, please subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button and then by also clicking the bell above to get an automatic update whenever we produce another YouTube video for our See Answers TV channel. Please share our videos with your friends and relatives. May God bless you. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what is done for Christ will last.